All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, so today, this morning, we have a senior speech. So please make sure your cell phones are silenced and that you are prepared to give your undivided attention to this morning's speaker. Um, here to introduce our speaker is Mr. Harry Anderson. I've named Paul ever since I've came to North Trust, but we were not true friends until high school. But I do not want to focus on that relationship, rather on why I came to North Trust. I came to North Trust in order to improve my opportunities based on the proximity to resources that I was lacking at my old school. But nations do not have the same, same ease to change situations as people do. Rather, they must use, rather they must expand aggressively in order to um, reach for these opportunities that they are lacking. Here, here to talk to you about the cause of Russian aggression, Paul Schuller. Geography has always and will always be a major part of world politics and everyday life. This is the problem every Russian leader from the Kievan Rus to present day has had to deal with, Russia's cursed geography. Russia's enhanced sense of territoriality and aggression is primarily caused by Russia's extremely poor geography. Russian leaders have attempted to create artificial barriers which are now under threat in place of their missing geographic barriers and maintain their access to global trade through acquisition of warm water ports. By looking at this case and others throughout history through the lens of geography, we can understand the motivations behind Russian acts like the invasion of Ukraine. So let us analyze Russian geography. Russia is immense. It is the second largest in the, in the world by total land area. Currently, it holds sovereignty over 6,592,772 square miles, spans 11 time zones, and has coasts on the Pacific and Arctic Oceans, as well as on the Black Sea and Baltic Sea. It holds incredible biodiversity and has over 23,000 miles of coastline. Russia shares 1,400 miles of border with European Union states. Moscow is 250 miles away from the nearest border, and Russians mostly live on the west side of the country, east or west of the Ural Mountains. It, it boasts a population density of nine people per square kilometer, and because of how huge it is, it recognizes 85 different ethnic groups, which makes it complicated to organize. There are two key aspects of Russian geography to focus on. First, Russia needs water. Port is defined as a place where ships may take on or discharge cargo. According to the United States Department of Transportation, the United States has over 300 ports. According to Maritime UK, the United Kingdom has 120 ports. Russia, depending on how you count them, has seven. One of them, Vladivostok on the Sea of Japan, freezes over half the year. The other main ports are the Port of St. Petersburg on the Baltic Sea and the Port of Sevastopol on the Crimean Peninsula in the Black Sea. Sevastopol is Russia's only true warm water port and therefore ice-free port. Almost all of Russia's coastline is in the Arctic Circle, making the viable location for a port limited. Second, apart from the Ural Mountains, Russia is flat. The Northern European Plain is, quote, the greatest uninterrupted expanse of plain on Earth's surface, end quote. It stretches from the Pyrenees in France and Spain to the Ural Mountains in central Russia. The plain was formed about 2,600,000 to 12,000 years ago. Much of the landscape was glaciated over multiple times over this period. And when the glaciers receded, they created glacial outwash plains. All of Western Russia exists within this phenomenon. It slowly gets narrower as it moves west, but functionally there are no major geographic barriers between the heartland of Russia and the French border with Spain. Two foreign powers have used this plain to invade Russia from the west. They have used this plane as a highway into the Russian heartland straight to Moscow. Napoleon declared war in 1812 and made it to Moscow. However, it had been burned to make sure the French could not replenish their supplies and force a retreat that severely weakened Napoleon. Nazi Germany declared war in 1941, but were stopped just before Moscow. After three years and over 20 million dead, they were pushed all the way back to Berlin. The Northern European plain has shaped Russian foreign policy for centuries. The flat land allows for invading forces to move swiftly across the landscape. I'm going to use an analogy from the book Prisoners of Geography by Tim Marshall. In the chapter on Russia, Marshall compares the plane to a wedge, with Poland being the tip of the wedge. 
Here, the plane is only 300 miles wide, meaning it's a choke point. Russia can plug with military strength and political influence. Over the last several decades, especially after the fall of the Soviet Union, the countries of Eastern Europe have aligned themselves more and more with the West. First, Poland and now Ukraine have left Russia for the West. The choke point must, Russia must defend gets wider and wider until it must defend its entire 1,400-mile-long border from Finland to Ukraine. This is why Russia has focused so heavily on creating buffer states. The very reason Russia is so large is because of geography. The absence of geographic boundaries like rivers, mountains, or swamps made way for a single large state holding the entire eastern portion of the northern European plain. In the early years of the Russian state, all the way until the present day, Russia has had a doctrine of expansion. The Russian approach can be summed up as offense is the best defense. Seeing as they lack natural defense, they must either expand faster than their competitors or create artificial barriers like puppet states. For example, Peter the Great was the Tsar of Russia from 1682 to 1725. He is considered one of Russia's greatest statesmen. Peter's rule can be characterized as battle for control of the coast, and he oversaw one of the most important eras of expansion. Russia was suffering severe economic loss due to being cut off from the Baltic and Black Seas. Russia's borders at this point did not stretch as far into Europe as today's boundaries. The Great, the great Northern War was fought from 1700 to 1721 between Russia and Sweden, who at this point controlled all of modern-day Finland and the Baltic states. Peter gained significant amount of territory on the Baltic Sea, including the modern-day countries of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. He moved his capital to the shores of the Baltic to a new city, the aptly named St. Petersburg. Years before this, Peter fought the Russo-Turkish Wars with the Ottoman Empire. In 1696, he captured the fortress of Azov, which gave Russia limited access to trading on the Mediterranean. With this new access to both the Black Sea and the Baltic Sea, Russia could expand their reach and create a navy. Ports on the Baltic gave the economy a boost, quickly making St. Petersburg the second largest city in Russia and its cultural and political capital. Today, it is still the center, center of Russian culture, although the capital has moved back to Moscow. Russia joined the growing global economy and gained new trading partners such as England, Italy, Spain, and Holland. Russian geography motivated Peter the Great into two major drawn-out conflicts, which aided Russia in becoming a world power. Without ports on the Black Sea and Baltic Sea, Russia would be less developed and disconnected from the global economy. After the 1700s, there was little territorial change for Russia, so let's fast forward a couple centuries. The Soviet Union, which lasted from 1922 to 91, dealt with Russia's defense problem in a quite problematic manner for the West. After their victory in the Second World War, the Soviets held many Eastern European states, which, which included Poland, Czechia, and parts of Germany, as well as many others. After the war, Joseph Stalin ensured these stayed in Soviet hands and became satellite states controlled politically by the Kremlin. As Winston Churchill described it in 1946, an iron curtain had been lowered. At that time, Moscow was over a thousand miles away from, his, from their Western rivals of the United States, UK, and France, rather than only 300 miles from the Polish border. As long as the curtain was lowered, Russia couldn't be invaded from the West through the Northern European plain. All the new satellites allowed for the most sea access that any Russian state has ever had. In place of their missing geographic barriers, they created artificial and political barriers that were extremely difficult to penetrate. Eventually, the Iron Curtain would fall, and geography would re reassert herself. The Soviet Union's last general secretary of the Communist Party, Mikhail Gorbachev, inherited a corrupt system in serious danger of economic collapse. Gorbachev hoped the party could maintain control, though by 1991, the Soviet Union had collapsed as a result of Gorbachev's policies, along with many other reasons. The new Russian Federation kept Gorbachev's policy of glasnost, or openness. Russians could access the internet, criticize the government, and even vote. In turn, they became more aware of Western media and Western culture. Their newfound freedom let former communist countries of the Iron Curtain begin orienting themselves towards the West, which had many economic and political advantages. Today, Poland, Finland, Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, Bulgaria, Romania, the Czech Republic, and Slovakia, all former Soviet bloc countries, have joined NATO. Russia, until recently, allowed this without a fuss. Vladimir Putin, the current president of Russia, has systematically rolled back freedom of press, 
as well as many other civil liberties like LGBTQ rights. He has centralized the state, putting more power in the presidency than the Constitution of 1993 had permitted. After the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia lacked a clear ideology, seeing as the system was suddenly not communist. Putin fixed this by making his own ideology, which is even helping him remain popular even as casualties mount in Ukraine. Russia's past has been mythologized, sp specifically the Second World War. Putin still uses the threat of Nazism to justify his actions. According to his narrative, the entirety of the West was under a Nazi conspiracy during the Second World War. Putin has cultivated a feeling of isolation that it's Russia against the world. His paranoia is palpable. In 1994, after the fall of the Soviet Union, Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Russia, and the United States signed the Budapest Memorandum. This agreement had Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan, all former Soviet satellites, denuclearize. Until this agreement, Ukraine was the third largest nuclear power behind only the United States and Russia. In exchange, if any country were to attack Ukraine, Russia and the United States should come to their aid under this agreement. This decision at least appears to have backfired as one of the countries they sought security from would invade them just 20 years later. In March of 2014, the Kremlin officially annexed the Ukrainian peninsula of Crimea, along with the key port of Sevastopol, in response to the overthrow of the Ukrainian president, Viktor Yanukovych, just one month earlier. Yanukovych was overthrown after he threw out a bill that would bring Ukraine closer to the West and instead opted to strengthen ties with Russia. Protesters were able to force themselves in, into government buildings and take over the government. Russian President Vladimir Putin justified the annexation by citing protection of the large number of ethnic Russians within Crimea. He would later use the same justification, among others, for the larger invasion of Ukraine. Putin's real motivations for obtaining Crimea, however, are rooted in its geographic location. The port of Sevastopol sits at the tip of the peninsula, and is an ideal location for trade and commerce, as well as a naval base. With their influence within Ukraine's government significantly diminished and their power in the Black Sea at risk, Putin acted quickly in the interest of Russian national security, securing the only Russian port on the Black Sea. Remember Russia's two geography problems, the need for ports and the need for buffer states. Ukraine is a major part of solving both of those problems. After years of minor proxy conflict since 2015, on February 24th, 2022, Vlad Vladimir Putin authorized the, quote, special military operation, end quote, against the sovereign country of Ukraine. Russia invaded from the east in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, both predominantly ethnically Russian. The war has now been raging for over two years, with hundreds of thousands of lives lost on both sides. Initially, Russian forces advanced quickly, However, however, the Ukrainian army made a stand at, at Kiev and pushed them all the way back to Donetsk and Luhansk. According to the New York Times, it was estimated in August that half a million people had been killed, not including civilian casualties. Over 10 million Ukrainian civilians have been displaced internally and abroad, with many fleeing to neighboring countries such as Poland and the Czech Republic. Putin stated in, in a speech on February 22, 2022, Russia's goals were to, quote, demilitarize and denazify Ukraine, and even, end quote, and even went on to even claim an alleged genocide of ethnic Russians within the country. These were not, in fact, his actual motivations, but an attempt to convince the Russian people this invasion was justified. Putin's popularity has stayed consistently high and even jumped when Crimea was annexed. Propaganda, nationalism, and manipulation of his own people have allowed him to remain so popular. As stated before, the, the former communist bloc countries have slowly been aligning themselves with the West. As their sphere of influence diminishes, the Western threat becomes more and more real. Putin is paranoid of Western meddling in Russia's affairs and of an imminent attack, which he believes will happen soon. Ukraine was one of the last states under Russia's sphere of influence, and it was one of the most important. Ukraine has a very productive grain sector, exporting grain to many countries in the Middle East and Russia itself. It borders Russia, meaning that there would be, not be any insulation if it joined with the West. In the face of an imminent Western attack, that is a scary thought buying Russian logic. It holds territory in the Black Sea, meaning without the port of Sevastopol, Russia would lose vital trade routes. Just like in 1700, 
Russia's economy would suffer from being cut off from the sea. Russian businesses and industry would lose foreign markets to sell their goods. And if Putin let Ukraine go, he would lose access to the sea and a major buffer between him and the West. Geography is a main reason why Putin is doing what he's doing. However, it is not the only factor. There are many cultural and economic reasons Putin has decided to invade. For example, Putin has stated multiple times that Ukraine is not a sovereign country, and it was always and should always be a part of Russia. Geography is the most important factor because of how it influenced Putin's predecessors and because of the very real economic and political threats geography poses. However, this current war is far from the best solution and has even hurt Russia more than it has helped. Sanctions on Russia have slowed the economy down. Central Asian countries such as Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan, or former communist countries, have been distancing themselves from Russia, as well as, of course, the hundreds of thousands of casualties on the front lines. Internally, opposition has grown and become more vocal speaking out against the war. Many people choose to speak out despite severe punishments. In 2023, a rebellion was staged by the Wagner Group, paramilitary and mercenary organization that has been fighting on the front lines for the Russians. It was unsuccessful, however, it further demonstrates the issues with Russian geography. The Wagner Group marched from the front lines in Ukraine, halfway to Moscow, over 350 miles in just a 12-hour time span, showing what a modern army is capable of in terms of speed across the plain. To be perfectly clear, I'm not attempting to justify Putin's actions in any way or excuse him or tell you he's remotely a good person. Hundreds of thousands of lives have been lost and millions of Ukrainians have been displaced in this war. I'm simply trying to give you an understanding of the motivations to his actions. They're the same as Peter the Great and Joseph Stalin, buffer states and warm water ports. It caused them to march for war, centralize the state, center the media and crush resistance just as Putin is doing today. He's a cold, calculating individual, backed into a corner, who believes the only way to get out is by throwing a punch. Thank you.